you are watching Well of the Fathers. Welcome once again. Praise God. It's good to have all of you. Um, we are still on the continuation of the Goyers Summit, the teachings of the Goyers Summit that they held in Accra, Ghana. We call it Go Years 2023. It was such a wonderful meeting. I first want to appreciate the international founding president of Goifan Vision, Apostle Robert Living Chikure. I want to appreciate you. I want to thank God for you and for what God is doing in your life. I want to say thank you for submitting to God in betting the vision of Goifa. May the Lord strengthen you and uphold your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. I also want to appreciate all those that came to Accra. Some of them came from South Africa, Canada, um, Botswana, Zimbabwe, um, you know, all the countries, I want to say a big thanks to you for the great sacrifice. I also want to thank our, our host, the Ghana Goifa. May the Lord bless every one of you. It was such a wonderful meeting. Hallelujah. So the subject of the, um, the summit, we talk on Lord, show me your glory. I'm excited about that now because this is the core of the gospel of the kingdom. This is the main subject of the gospel of the kingdom. Now because what man lost in the Eden was the glory of God. It's important for us to know that the pursuit of the kingdom is the pursuit of glory. So man lost the glory. So the journey is the journey of the restoration of the glory of God. So it's important that we know what man need. The need of man is not actually things. What man need is the glory of God. Hallelujah. So like I said in the conference, uh, I'm not guaranteeing that everyone will see the glory of God. The glory of God will only be made available to desperate seekers of God. It will be made available to those who understand, who know the reason of the glory of God. It wasn't the glory of things. Show me your glory. It was a sincere heart cry of Moses. Now that's why I said that it is important for us to know at what point did Moses demand the desire the glory of God. Moses has journeyed. Moses has parted the Red Sea. Moses has performed great signs and wonders in Egypt. He has seen the armies of Pharaoh swallowed up, overtaken by the sea. He saw great and marvelous act of God. He saw the river parted, water came out of the rock. He saw God fed them with manna the bread from above. Yes, after Moses saw all of those things, Moses began to yield for the glory of God. So the glory of God surpasses all of those things. So now I am seeing or want us to look at the reason for the glory. What is the glory for? What is the essence of the glory? Now, the reason why some are not seeking for the glory is because they don't actually understand the glory. They do not know the reason for that. But you see, Apostle Paul understood. That's why Apostle Paul said that I am convinced and persuaded that the suffering of this present time cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. So there is a glory that shall be revealed in who? The seekers of God. The seekers of God. The lover of God. For eyes have not seen. 
ears have not heard. It has not come to the heart of any man. The things that God has in store for those that love him. Hallelujah. It wasn't the glory of the Teresia. It wasn't the glory of things. Like I said in the formal episode, there are glory of building. That's what we see. Cathedrals. Cathedrals, mighty ones. We say, what a glory. Oh my God, the glory of God. They are nice. They are actually glorious. They are what having. But that is not. The, that is not what Moses was demanding for. It wasn't what Moses was seeking for. We have seen jet ministries. We have seen jet. We have seen all of those things. These are not what Moses was asking for. What Moses was asking for is different from all of this thing. Now, you see, now I'm not trying to make light of these things. They are not the pursuit. But you see, by the reason of the calling, we are implicated for abundance. All of these things will come on their own as we engage in the work of God and as the need arises, God will make supply of all of these things. Hallelujah. So, we are talking about the glory of God, not the glory that the heart of church is uh, looking for. Like Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 7, he said that in, the, in those days that seven women will lay hold of one man. They will lay hold of one man. They say we will eat our own bread. We have our own clothing, our own glory. Only let us answer your name. Let us be under the covering of God. And this is what we are seeing in our days. So many churches, so many people are under the covering of God. They are not actually under the lordship of God. They are not submitting. They are not seeking for God. They want to use God to get what they want. They say we will have our own teachings. We are going to have our own doctrines. We are going to have our own glory. But the same, the next one said, in those days, the branch of the Lord shall be glorious. Hallelujah. The branch of the Lord shall be glorious. In other words, the remnant will go after God. They will receive God. They will pursue God. They will be glorious. Oh my God. Hallelujah. So we are looking. What actually is the essence of the glory of God? The reason of God unveiling and making the glory known to us and bringing us to the glory is to become like him. That's the essence of the glory. To become like him. To commune with him. To fellowship with him. Now because you can't actually commune with God except you're like God. You can't fellowship with God except you're like God. So you must come to the height of divinity. You must become glorious to have fellowship with God. Anything in the flesh can come into such a dimension of glory and fellowship. Hallelujah. So this is what now we must ask of this. It is important for us to know that the God we serve is the God that answers prayer. When we see something genuinely, sincerely, God is bound to answer that. It might not be now. It might take time because he makes it all things beautiful in his time. Hallelujah. Now you see, Moses asked of these things. It took about 1,500 years again. After 1,500 years again, Jesus Christ appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration. On the Mount of Transfiguration, he appeared. They brought Moses and Elijah to come and behold the face of Jesus. Oh, the scripture said that the faith of Jesus, the countenance, was full of light. It was full of glory. Oh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 talked about the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The glory of God in the face of Jesus. So they brought Moses. It wasn't love thing. It wasn't from boil thing. It wasn't noisy thing. They came and the scripture said, and uh, they commune with him. They commune with the glory. By communing 
with the glory of God and focusing, gazing on the glory of God that will conform to the image and the fullness of Christ. We need to be consistent in focusing and communicating with the glory of God. Now, the scripture said, now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. And we all, with unveiled face, just like Moses, beheld the glory of Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. So we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of God, we are changed. So the reason for beholding glory, the reason for seeing the glory is for change. That's the reason for the glory. So we change from one degree of glory to another. So we conform to the image of Christ. And this is actually the, 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 the reason for the calling. That's why the next verse said, chapter 4, verse 1 of 2 Corinthians, he said, Therefore, seeing that we have this ministry, I want you to, to, to resound in our heart that this is the ministry that we have. The ministry we have is not the ministry of building, raising billionaires. Thank God for raising them. Thank God for building structures. But you see, there's nothing we build here that will last to eternity. There is nothing that we build here that has reward eternally. That's why the focus is on raising and grooming sons. The scripture said that Yeshua came to raise many sons to glory. He came to raise many sons unto glory. You see, now the glory which I have given to me, I have given to them that we all may be one. So the essence of, of demanding for seeing of the glory is to conform to that glory and to become that glory. Now this is according to the eternal purpose of God. This is according to the eternal purpose of God. Now because if we don't become glory, the purpose of God concerning the earth will not be realized. So it is in becoming glory that we realize this eternal purpose of God in earth being filled with the glory of God because it is the source of God. It is the source of God that we release the fullness of glory upon the earth or that we structure the earth landscape the earth and make the earth glorious. It is the source of God. The glory that we issue from the source of God. Like we see that in the temple of Ezekiel. So you see why we are not the temple, why we are not the city of God. So when the city, when the bride was shown to John, what was shown to John was a glorious city. And the city is a synonymous to the temple. Sometimes see the temple is referred to the city. The city is referred to the temple. So the, uh, the bride of Christ was shown to John as the city of God. In Revelation 2, 3, let me say the city has the glory of God. In other words, that, that city, glory will flow from that city to the nations of the earth. This is how the eternal vision of God will come to fruition. And truly, as I live, my glory will cover the earth. My glory will cover the earth. Right on the vision, the glory of God will cover the earth as waters cover the sea. In other words, the glory will cover the sea is actually the source of God. When you look from the heavenly region, you look, you see songs of God that are glorious covering the earth. That's the glory that cover the earth. It's actually the source of God. So the essence of beholding glory is to become glory. So we need to follow after it. Like Paul said to Timothy, follow after righteousness. Lay hold on eternal life. That eternal life is after the glory of God. Lay hold on it. it to which thou has called and has made good profession. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we are not seeking for glory for anything else but to become God. 
but to conform to the image day that he foreknew. Praise God. Day that he foreknew. He justified, and then I justified, he glorified. He glorified. So he predestined them to conform to the image of Christ. He predestined. So our predestination is to become glorious. Hallelujah. Is to become glorious. This is the calling that is hanging upon the saint, upon the source of God. We are called to become glory. Peter said, the God of all grace who has called us to this eternal glory in Christ Jesus. So how do we come to this glory? Is by beholding, by focusing, by learning to see Christ and not less. By keeping to it. Like Isaiah said, that my faith is like a flint. It can be burned. It can be changed. We are focused on grace, on the glory. I have sent the Lord before me. Therefore lies have fallen on me in pleasant places. I have good heritage. I have good heritage. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So we must be glory conscious. We must be seeing the glory of God. Beholding the glory, not in earth. Which glory? The glory of the only begotten Son of God, full of grace. The glory of the only begotten Son of God, full of grace, full of grace. This is the calling that is hanging upon us. So the essence of desiring to see the glory of God is to become. Now because Christ is the glory of God. Christ is the glory of God. Christ is the glory of the Father. The Spirit is the glory of the Father. That's what the, the scripture said, that, he, that the glory of God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. The glory of God raised Jesus from the dead. So we are coming to enliven in conformity to glory by beholding the glory of God. So what Moses was asking for is to become him, to come into that intimate, you know, Unison, oneness, colonia, to become one with God. And this is actually what Jesus came for. The glory I've given to me, I've given to them this glory. The essence of that glory is that we all may be one. So God will not bring a being that is not glorious to join unto himself. So he must join glorious being to himself. Now what you, you must know is that after God created everything, the universe, the creature, the animal, and everything, nothing was what for communion and fellowship with, with God. Not even angels. Not even angels. That's what the scripture even say, that the angels are desiring to look into these things. They desire to look into this. So the angel can fellowship. So after God created, so God began to look for a being like him. A being in the same configuration to commune and to fellowship with. So if it is not exactly like God, God can fellowship with it. So God has to create a man in his own image. Have thanks like this. So he envisions such a man. He envisions such a man that he can share his life. He can share his exclusive thing with. And God created man. So the essence of the pursuit of glory, focusing on glory, desiring glory, is to become, so that we can, uh, we can have the stature of communicating, interacting, and fellowshipping with God. Hallelujah! I am praying that, like uh, our Apostle Paul, you know, pray and desire. Hallelujah! The eyes of the understanding to be lightened. That we may know what is the riches of the glory of this inheritance. That we may know it. That the riches of the glory of in us. So Christ is that riches of the glory that is in us. But see, as we focus and keep communing and interacting, we begin a journey from one degree of glory to another, from one degree of glory to another. This is the faith. This is the faith. This is the calling. We are called to become. We are called to become. Praise God. 
Now the reason the as scripture said he chose the twelve to be with him, to be to be communing, interacting, and beholding glory, so that they can come with the capacity of the fullness of God and affect the creation. The reason to the reason for the glory is to become like him so that we can be restored to the place of divine authority of the man that given to us. You see, like I said earlier, you cannot handle the dominion of the earth unless you become exactly like him. This is when the creation will acknowledge you for the endless expectation of the creature. They are waiting for the manifestation of the source of God. For the creature will be delivered from the bondage of corruption to the glorious liberty of the sons of God, the glorious liberty, the glorious reign of the sons of God. So the sons of God must have gotten to the glorious liberty. Then they can bring the creation, the entire creation of God to that liberty so they will preserve the earth, they will sustain the earth. Because the earth can be sustained by God. It can be sustained by the power of God. And then they begin to nature the earth, replenish the earth, that the earth become a praise of God. Hallelujah. God bless you this morning as we begin to uh, focus on the glory of God, as we begin to gaze on the glory. Gaze on the glory. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. So for watching and uh, listening, and my desire is that you follow after that which you you've heard. That's your greatest pursuit is the glory of God, not the glory of things, but the glory of God. Let no man brag with the glory. All the glories of this world, they are coming to nothing. They are, they are, they are, they are. Cor they will corrupt. But we are talking about the unfading glory, the glory that does not fade away. Blessed be the Lord God who has begotten us to the lively hope, to inherit glory, to inherit that which does not defile, which does not fade away. This is the glory that we are called to pursue and to get entrance into. God bless you this morning in Yeshua. Precious that we pray. Amen. Thank you.